Welcome back. In case you haven't figured out what the heck this thing is in my lap, I'm holding the brand new gas tank for the C10. And this is a major update for an older truck where the gas tank is behind the rear seat. There are many good reasons to not have a gas tank strapped right behind you, in the, right behind your back. The main reason why I don't like the rear mounted gas tanks is you cannot get rid of the gas fumes in the cab no matter what. Luckily, an old drafty cab like this, it's not a big deal. We're going to be putting new seals throughout the whole thing. It's 2020. It's just a safer option to have the gas tank as far behind you as possible. My buddy Mike that I'm building the truck for is going to have his kids in this thing. So it's just common sense. It's not an expensive upgrade. Now, thanks to companies like LMC and I think Brothers Truck also offer a kit like this. It's really easy to mount the tank in the rear of this thing. And you'll see in the video how easy, how simple and easy it is. All right, first of all, if you don't know where the tank go, if you don't know where the tank goes when you're doing this swap, it goes where the spare tire, it goes in the very back of the frame where the spare tire used to go. If you look at the size of the tank, it's about the same shape and size as the hole it's going in. So it's, it's pretty easy to figure out. Obviously, it can't go up there where the drive shaft is. Got to go back here. Um, whoever did the last restoration on this truck took the spare tire carry out of it anyway. So we just need to remove this bracket. And it's just these pesky, it's just these pesky hot rivets here. Uh, one cool little trick, maybe I'll get a close up of this with those. Uh, if you have a really sharp, if you have a really sharp air hammer bit and a really good air hammer and a really good compressor, you can knock the head off with just the air hammer. But I have a little bit of a weaker setup, so I just make an X cut in the rivet. Don't go all the way through, just enough to lighten up the, the material and then I plow the rivet through. If you have a torch, that also works pretty well, but you run the risk of putting little gouges in the frame, so be careful with that. The kit, for the most part, comes pretty complete. When you go on LMC's website, you've got to piece out what you want. There are a few different options, uh, like the fuel filler cap. The fuel filler cap, they offer a couple different ones. There's a secure one and a non-secure one. I chose the non-secure. We're shaving the lock cylinders in the same thing anyways. So wants to take the gas too. I guess, I guess they're just going to have their way with it. Let's see. I also opted for the anti squeak kit. I hate squeaks and rattles. So anytime I can mount a piece of rubber between two metal surfaces, I do that. Um, it also, I think comes with a couple different options for a sending unit. Um, it might be a press on hose or a quick connect hose. So again, preferences. So for the tank, there are two different options. There's the top fill that goes to the bed floor. We opted for that because I didn't want to have any external filler door cluttering up the body. We're going for a nice clean look on this. We're going to be shaving a lot of, we're going to be shaving marker lights and things like that. I didn't want to add another hole in the outside of the body. So this will go through the bed floor. The side fill option is a, this is a 17 gallon, but the side fill option is 21 gallon. And they do make fillers that go through the tail light I think they're kind of a pain in the butt. The one truck that I saw it on, it, it was hard to get the filler in there without touching any of the paint and it took a long time to fill the tank up. As far as removing material so this thing fits, I'm pretty sure, like I said, it's just this bracket for the 17 gallon. I think the side fill is a little bit taller where you actually have to go through and cut part of the bed cross member out. I don't know, we'll see, when, we'll see once this thing goes in if that's true or not. But I think that's all I have to talk at you. I'm gonna get you locked off in the tripod and we'll get this we'll get this bracket out of here and get this thing bolted up. I feel like I have to add this disclaimer anytime I am using a death wheel or one of these large cutoff wheels on camera. There's a reason why the nickname is Death Wheel. Always wear a full face shield if you're using these. They can get microscopic cracks in them from setting them down the wrong way or even in packaging. And I have seen these blow up in people's faces and it is not pretty. So full face shield, safety is really cheap. These are like 12 bucks. Go buy one before you even turn this thing on. It, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than a brand new face. We now have a humongous hole in the back of the frame. That's exactly what we want. Nice and open. 
and we're gonna slide the new gas tank right up underneath the frame and jack it up if you're using a floor jack to do this if you don't have a buddy or two to help you just just lift it up empty make sure you have a large block of wood a big flat piece of wood underneath there you don't want to you don't want to be caving in your brand new tank and just go up with it slowly to line the holes up you probably can't see it on the camera but i put i put the bolts in the holes so the tank could self align as it came up Okay, now that we got our tank fitting in the hole, I'll try to get a upper shot here. Man, I love put I love putting shiny parts on an old rusty frame for mock up. Um, but man, this is gonna look cool. This is gonna look cool when the frame's painted. And you can see this tank fits in here so nicely. This cross member is actually it's hard to tell on camera, but that is kind of cattywampus from the squaring of the frame. And this tank fits so nicely right in there. Uh, now that we have the holes lined up. We need to fit the gas tank straps up and you'll notice in your kit when you get one they come bent and they're definitely not in the right shape that's okay they just do that for shipping they're really easy to bend in, into shape but what you want is this 90 degree to sit this big flat edge oh focus this big flat edge sits flush against the tank and the rest of it wraps right around and it also comes with these really cool J hooks, so the tank can be serviced really easily in the future. I, I'm gonna butcher this, but I think these go through the frame this way, so you just undo the nut and the straps come out from underneath it. We will fit the first tank strap. I'll try to film this the best I can. It's pretty self-explanatory if you just look at the parts that you have. There's actually channels in the tank that'll show you where it goes. It's kind of confusing because there are these channels here. That's for a different application. They, I'm sure they made this tank for a bunch of different things. We are looking for the straps to run this way along the tank and you'll see the channels on the bottom. I need some better filming equipment so I can film this stuff. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know I'm huge about checking in your parts. Two big reasons for checking your parts is A, you can tell something's damaged right when you get it and you can return it and then have it and have the new one in a timely fashion. And B, you get an idea of how everything bolts and mounts together if you look it over really well. As I said, if you play if you played the shapes game as a kid, squares and squares square squares and square holes stars and star holes this is a fairly simple project for you i'm gonna get you locked back off on the tripod and start fitting these straps up <laughs> Jack is free, boop. The straps are nice and tight. The tank's in here. Now the tricky part comes. We need to measure where we need to cut the hole in that floor. Now if you have a wood kit, a wood bed floor in your truck, this will be a lot easier because you can pull the plank out where this cap lines up with and set and measure very precisely between those, measure very precisely between those planks and get a dead center hole. We're not so fortunate here. I'm gonna have to, this is a steel bed floor, so I'm gonna have to, I think my best bet is to measure off the centers of, of the bed mounting holes. That's really the only way I can think to do this. If you know a better way to measure this out, please hit me up in the comments down below. I would love to know an easier way. What we'll be doing is taking a piece of string from the center, center of the bed mounting holes and taping it across and then taping a dead center Oops, it's my crotch. Taping a dense, dead center string here as well between these mounting holes, and we'll be able to get a good grid measurement for the dead center of this, and then we'll do the same, we'll measure off those same holes 
in the bed and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's close enough, but we'll only know once we set the bed down. I had a brilliant epiphany last night when I was trying to sleep. Like most of us, that's when my good ideas come to me. Instead of trying to measure out where the fuel tank hole is, I think with this top fill 17 gallon tank, I think I can put the bed back on and jack the tank up into position and I can line it up almost perfectly where it needs to be cut and avoid and avoid all mistakes. I've been weaseling stuff around the shop, getting the bed ready to go back on. I had no idea how much stuff I had in that bed. It's taken a while to clean that out and get the bed ready to go on, but I'm just about ready to set it down. We'll get that set down, we'll get the tank jacked up and we'll see how that and we'll see how that goes. Before my heater kicks fully in, I've got the bed, the bed's back on the truck, it's all lined up. I put, I bolted it down on all four corners. That way it doesn't move while I'm getting the tank fit up. And then I've got some other bed alignment stuff. I wanna build the exhaust while the bed's on too. So I wanna make sure all that stuff stays bolted while I'm gonna be cutting weld it. I'm gonna be cutting the hole for the tank, be welding the exhaust. I don't, I don't want this to get bumped and set any alignment off. Let's get this thing jacked up in the rear so I can actually fit under there and we get the tank we can get the tank into place and see if we have to cut that rear cross member and see if we have to and see if we can line the hole up to punch through. I don't think we're gonna have to cut the cross member at all. I think the tank sat flush with the frame, which that would be awesome. That would save a lot of time. Well, you just admire how low that thing is already. <laughs> it looks awesome. Maybe we should consider those wheels and tires. Just kidding, Mike. All right, let's throw a jack under here, get it up on some jack stands so we have plenty of clearance and this thing's not gonna crush us. And then I will grab the tank. G2G. All right, we're already we're already running into clearance issues. It looks like the one of the rear bed cross members is right where the filler neck tube needs to go up, which isn't a good thing. I was hoping just for an easy boop, boop and cut a hole, but we're gonna have to drop the tank, trim some of the cross member out of the way, and then try to reseat it in there. I'll try to get a good uh, visual. I'll try to get a good visual of the camera while I'm in there. It's really tough to film under here and get a line of sight the same way my eyes can with the camera. I'll do my best. Bear with me. As always with these videos, I got a brand new plan. I've changed my mind once again. Uh, looking at the hole the tank goes in. It looks like I could slide it back and forth. I have about three to four, I have about three inches of movement forward and back. Now I can't use an existing frame hole, but I'm gonna center, I'm gonna line the tank up where I want it to be, drill four new holes and the truck will be happier. I'll be happier. I won't have to cut that cross member. I really don't wanna do that. I'm gonna get the tank all lined up. This is hard to film. I'm gonna probably grab the GoPro and see if I can get some footage of that. But I'm gonna line the tank up side to side and front and rear and get those new holes drilled and get this thing mounted and get it mounted solid. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna line the filler neck up and cut the hole for that. That was super tedious. That took that took forever to get that to get that lined up just right. I want to show you exactly what's going on under there. Again, it's hard to film and show you what what's happening, why I'm doing what I'm doing. But now I have the, the tank back out, and I'll show you. Uh, so this is where the sending unit locks in, and then this is our filler neck right here. There is a bed cross member that runs right between these two. Now, in the original mounting holes, that cross member sat halfway through this. And I was able to slide the tank rearward in the truck, which brought this out from underneath that cross member. So now the cross member sits about dead center here and it doesn't block anything. I'll be able to just cut a hole right through the bed, right through the bed floor, which I'm very happy 
which I'm very happy about. <laughs> That's much easier than trying to trim that cross member and then rebrace it because, you know, if this was primarily a show truck where nothing was going in the bed ever, then I wouldn't even worry about having a cross member in there. But I don't want Mike, I don't want Mike to put a cooler full of beer back there and have the bed floor get a little wonky. So we are set up. Here's the dealio. We need to get from this filler tube to this fancy pop-up cap through a blind a blind hole. We can't see through the bed. We can't line this up perfectly with this tube. So what we're gonna do is slide this tube onto the filler neck and jack the tank up into place and this will rest against the bed floor and we can take a marker and mark all the way around there. That's only half the problem. Now we have a hole from the bottom of the bed, but I don't wanna, I hate overhead drilling. I did enough with this. I wanna drill from the top. So what we'll do is we'll find the center of this circle, which will be very easy because we'll have a nice marker mark. Good, the heater shut off. I don't have to yell anymore. You can probably hear me better now too. And we'll be able to find the dead center of that and poke a 1 8 hole with the drill bit through there and that'll transfer, transfer the center of our circle to the top of the bed and we'll be able to duplicate the circle and we'll be able to drill from the top. I don't know if you can see on the back side there, there's fasteners. It has to be a very precise hole. There's only me, I don't know, there's only probably an eighth inch of air built into this thing. Now there's a little bit of wiggle room with this tube, but you can't count on it. This thing doesn't bend that easily and you really don't wanna have too much stress on this tube and eventually over time have it dry rot and crack just because we were too too lazy or preoccupied to do the right thing. I'll show you this cool little cap. You have to push that really hard. I used to have these on a motorcycle. It's easier when it's in the actual hole. It's a lot easier to do. There we go. See that pops up. This unscrews. Boom. There's our filler hole and there's our mounting surface. All right. Enough showing you my toys. I am going to put this tube back on. Put this tube on the tank, and we'll get it jacked up in there and get the circle drawn. All right, I got my, the tubes cut the length and I've got it stuck up in there. I'm gonna try to get an angle in here. Ah, there we go. I don't know if it'll focus or not, but the tube is right there and you can see it's touching the bed floor and that's coming up from the tank. So I'm gonna take my marker and mark around the base of that and we'll pull the tank out and I'll, and I'll show you exactly with it and I'll be able to get a good shot of where we drew the circle. Okay. Try to sit, stay out of my own light here. Where, oh, boom, there we go. There is our marked circle. We'll just make an, a nice X and get our center. And I don't know if you can see the marks on this cross member, you can. Yeah, so this is the cross member that was originally in the way. This rests dead center between the sending unit and that filler neck hose now, which is a good spot for it. These are the new holes, we to drill some new holes. No big deal. Um, yeah, I, I like this setup a lot better than having to hack this cross member out and reinforce this. I'll, it would have sucked to have to drill a hole, to cut this, then drill a hole, and to make a reinforcement. All right, I've got my pilot hole drilled. I got my hole saw set up with a pilot bit. I really hate hole sawing, but I really, I want to get this done today. All right, we have a hole. Woo! Oh man, I hate that hole saw. 
I'm gonna take a die grinder and clean up this hole a little bit and we will drop our we'll drop our filler cap in. I need to obviously a truck bed floor, you can't really see it with this old crappy bed liner in here, but it's corrugated, maybe that's the right word, it has ridges in it. So we're gonna have to hammer this spot flat and I'll show you a trick to do that. So what we have now is we have a hole in the bed, but I'll try to get in here to see if this will focus. Yeah, you can see on this edge, this filler cap does not sit flush. And it's kind of got an edge that doesn't sit flush here. This setup works a lot easier if you have a wood bed floor, but that's not going to stop us to make this look really nice. Um, what we're going to do, what you'll do, what we're going to do is we're going to make relief cuts in these ridges. We're going to set the cap over here and get an idea of how far we want to make the relief. I think I'll go probably about an inch past the cap, so there's a nice, it goes, it has a nice gradual flat spot and then goes right back up. And once this thing's bedlined again, it'll look really nice. It'll be really nice, really functional. So I'm going to get you locked off on the tripod so I can show you what I'm talking about. We'll get the outline marked for the cap and then we'll make those relief cuts so that way these ridges can lay down and where the excess metal is once this gets flattened out we'll take that we'll trim that out and then we will weld up our relief cuts and we will finally be able to bolt this cap in and get the mock-up done on this. All right, we got our relief cuts done. They're really hard to see on the camera, but you saw me do them. I just, I cut the tops of the ridge. What we're trying to do is we're trying to allow this metal to lay flat. All right, it's gonna be a little bit difficult on camera to see how nicely this panned out, but the relief cuts, again, it just allows the metal to sink where it needs to. It's stretched up into a ridge, so if we take, you know, whatever, that blade might be an eighth inch by the time, it might be close to an eighth inch by the time it trims that metal out. So if you take a quarter inch of metal out of that rib, it allows it to lay flat. You can kind of see in the camera that that's concaved. Let's go get the cap and see how it looks in there. Yeah, I got just a little bit of hammer work to do. I'm really happy with the final fit of the cap. I'm gonna start tacking these relief cuts back up. Remember, when you're welding sheet metal, just take your time, go slowly. Heat will kill all the work you've done in a situation like that. So I'm just gonna go through and make a few little tacks, let it cool, a few little tacks, let it cool, 
get this ground down all nice and we'll see where we end up. I've sped this footage up for your viewing pleasure, but I cannot express enough how slowly you need to go welding sheet metal. This is a very small section I'm welding, and I tack welded, tack welded, let it walked away, let it cool for a while, came back, did some more tack welding, and repeated the process over and over again. I thought I'd bring you in closer to see the stitched up bed floor because maybe you're new to sheet metal welding and it can be really intimidating, but I'm no punk and I'll, I'm happy to show you exactly what my welds look like before I grind them. Get in nice and close. Slice cuts like this in sheet metal, it should be exactly that, little stitches. Bzz, 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 bzz. I cut the video just to speed this up so you didn't have to watch any boring footage but I was going very slowly between each tack and you could see where I was bouncing around, crisscrossing between the seams. You don't wanna just go through and stitch a bunch of heat into this and check after a few welds, check your sheet metal, how it's lined up and make sure it looks exactly the way it did when you got it where you want it to be because the heat and expansion of that will change everything. You'll, you'll, I had to do just a little bit of tuning with the hammer and dolly through the welds, but not as much as I expected. Just watch everything you're doing. Watch everything you're doing because we're going to be doing we're going to be doing a lot more welding on this truck and a lot more welding sheet metal. We're going to be shaving stuff like the stake pockets, the marker the marker lights. We're going to do cab corners in here, uh, door skins, you name it. We're probably touching it on this truck. So there'll be a lot more. I'll do a lot more deep dives on the cutting and welding of sheet metal. I feel like it's one of the most important things you can learn to jump into project vehicles, and it's probably the most intimidating thing that I've heard from people that keeps them from jumping into a project like this. It's really not that hard. It's more intimidating than it sounds, and I'm gonna make it a lot easier for you. I'm gonna get you locked off on the tripod. We'll grind these welds down, and we'll see how our cap looks. All right, I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out, how the metal looks. It's hard to see in the camera, but what we have is exactly what we were aiming for. A nice flat spot around where this mounts. Oh my gosh, that sits so flush. So flush. And I'll try to get you. Oh man, that's gonna look good. So now we finally have a flush spot in the bed where we can drill and mount this cap. I have been waiting to do this for so long. I wanted to see this cap in here. <laughs> and once we can mount the, once we mount the cap, we'll do a final mock-up of how tall that hose needs to be, of course, and then we can be done with the tank until plumbing.
I was about to cinch the cap down and I realized there's a teachable moment here. Whenever you're assembling stainless hardware, especially tiny little stuff like this, you want to put a lubricant on the threads. Typically I use uh, you know, some sort of silicone grease type of thing. I think they do make a specialty lubricant that you're supposed to use for these, but I just use whatever I'm laying around and tonight all I have is some white lithium grease, so that's what I'm going to use. But be, be warned, you'll be very unhappy if you don't because more times than not with something this small you'll either snap the shank off or strip the head of this because it is so tight putting it in so be warned Damn, that thing is cool. I love that. That's in nice and solid. Now we can slide the ta tank back in under for the 700th time and get the exact length we need to cut our junction hose. In a surprise twist of fate, the... <laughs> The tank and the cap line up perfectly, but they're touching. So I'm going to have to drop the tank back out and shave at least a good inch off of the neck of the tank, which I'm surprised I had to do that. I was just worried about the hose being too long up in there. But once these are solid mounted, there's not going to be a lot of movement between the tank and the bed anyway, but I still want to give enough room where over time the vibration of the gas sloshing the tank isn't going to rub isn't going to rub those two necks when it gets warm out that tank's going to expand too which the top of the tank's going to push up so we want to make sure we have plenty of clearance but i also need to make sure there's plenty of room for the hose clamp on that neck uh stuff like this used to really kick me in the private parts but after building so many after building so many vehicles you kind of just go roll the punches and stuff like this won't slow you down before i pull the tank back out though i'm going to make sure i've got the i'm going to check the height of that rubber tube so we can cut that at the same time so we only have to put this back in once. We're rolling in the home stretch here, fitting up the tank. And I have a bunch of knowledge bombs to drop on you right now. So focus on this video because there's a lot of really cool things I'm about to show you. First thing, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but as I said, these tank straps come all weebly wonky packaged. So I, I even, I've even seen them folded in half. So you're gonna have to bend them to fit the tank. Now is a really good time to do that. But once it's under the vehicle on a jack, not so good. So I've got this one fit up. This one still needs some tweaking. Just a little bit, not much. So I'm going to tweak these. Those are fitting pretty darn good now. We're going to flip the tank over. All right, I'm going to get a little closer to here so you can see what I'm doing. So as I said, we need to trim this fuel neck down. Now, the one thing we don't want happening is we don't want any dirt or debris going down in this hole. So, bear with me. So what we can do is take a good sturdy shop rag. Don't, I wouldn't use an actual paper towel for this because it might break apart. This is a really strong cloth. We are going to take our dry cloth and dump water all over myself. And we are going to get it wet. Not too wet but you want to get it pretty damp. And this is going to do two things. It's going to hold it together better against the sides when we pack it down in this hole and you don't want to go too far because you'll never get it back. But we want to make a nice tight little wet ball of paper towel and shove it in this hole. And what that's going to do is this is going to, when I pull this back out, any dust and debris that's sitting on top of it, it's going to wipe the hole clean. <laughs> wipe the hole clean. 
cracking myself over here. Uh, it's gonna wipe this hole clean and pull that dust out when the rag comes out and none of it's gonna drop in the tank. But you do not wanna drop it too far. That's about as far as I dare go right now. Boom, there's a knowledge bomb for you. Keep dirt out of your tank. You can actually apply this to a lot of other things and a lot of other home projects. Make sure the ramp's slightly damp so it acts as a dust mop on the way out and it keeps the particles out. Drink water. Now the next thing. I think I shared this earlier in the video. I can't remember, I've been, been filming this over several nights so I don't remember. Now we need to make a straight cut on this tube and on our rubber hose. So they make they make stuff called pipe wrap. I'll try to I'll try to find it include a link down below. It's really nifty stuff, but I just use the old paper trick. You can take your piece of paper and now remember we just did this to find the center hole the center of the hole under the bottom of the bed. But what you can also do is wrap it tightly around and where the edges when the edges line up you have a nice straight line to draw across so you get a nice perfectly straight cut on here and on here. I am gonna get my line I'm gonna get my lines drawn, get this tube cut, get this filler neck cut, and we'll get this bad boy back in here. Are you ready for this? No dirt in the hole. I cut it, level it, even even beveled the inside of the hole so there's no, there are no sharp edges on this, all the paper towel in there, and we can set it and forget it. There's no dirt in here. I want this to be the very final fit up, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the sending unit in here because I wanna make sure that has nice clearance too. I wanna get everything all bolted up as if I'm putting this thing together right now. That's the point of a mock-up. Whatever you're mocking up, go all the way with it. Don't just put a couple bolts in it and say, yeah, it looks pretty good. Mock it all the way up, you'll be thankful you did. There have been a few times where I have half-assed it and I've paid the ultimate price. The vehicle went through, went through paint, put something on, and it just did not fit right, and I had to go back through paint, and my entire, the entire team at the shop I was working for was really pissed at me, so. Even if you're only accountable to yourself, you will be mad at yourself. It'd help if I actually put the gasket in. This is where two sets of hands would really help you, but 
You gotta do what you gotta do. Got the got the sending unit in. Got everything trimmed. This bad boy is ready to go in semi officially. This will be the very last mock up. Let's get this thing in here, get it bolted up so I can go home tonight. She is in. No jack under there. No jack under there. Straps are tight. The filler neck the filler neck connects very nicely. Look at the action on this thing. Look at that. Boom. Open the filler. There's a hole down there. It's the gas tank. I am going to leave you right there. You'll have to stay tuned for the plumbing. I'm going to do that after I paint the fr after I paint the frame and we'll do the brake line plumbing and the fuel plumbing all at the same time. There are a ton of little tips and tricks in here. Maybe you've heard them a thousand times. Maybe it's the first time. Either way, it just goes to show you what you can learn from a seemingly simple project like this. You saw all the hiccups we ran into and you saw how we elevated the appearance by just tri by just blending that bed rib a little bit. Little tiny stuff like that probably won't get noticed by a lot of people, but man, when it does, it feels good because other craftsmen like you and me are people that notice that stuff and you have an instant bond just like that. As always, I'm Jim Murphy. The channel's You Break It, You Fix It. You can follow me between videos on Instagram at You Break It, You Fix It. Please like the video, subscribe, hit me up and down in the comments. Like I say, I love to learn new stuff and I love seeing people helping this community out by adding value to it. And I will see you in another video.